All right, class. Today we are going to be describing cell replication at two different levels, somatic level and gametic level. So in order for us to have a better understanding of cellular reproduction, we're going to be discussing somatic, which are physiological cells that help with the growth of teeth, skin, hair, and the gametic cells, which are your sexually reproducing um, seeds that include sperm and eggs. As we can see here, we will also be looking at the patterns that each one of the cells go through. So for somatic, for mitosis, we have reproduction leading to two separate cells. Or in meiosis, we have reproduction which leads to four separate daughter cells. <clears throat> and for the next part of the assignment, we are also going to be talking about the similarities and differences between the two. So here we have mitosis in comparison to meiosis. We have the method of DNA replication. We have the number of divisions within reproduction. Then we also have some synapses of homologous chromosomes between the two phases. Then we also have the number of daughter cells and genetic composition along with role in the animal, oops, role in the animal body. All right, so the, that will be the um, similarities and differences. So for the next part, we're also going to be discussing any differences that might have occurred. So for the next assignment, we're gonna go ahead and talk about different models or different strategies that we look at in case something goes wrong during reproduction. So for mitosis, which is the physiological cells we're producing, what types of mutations would we expect to see if there are any deletions or insertions of chromosomes? And then for meiosis, we're going to be talking about the same, um, we're going to the same approach. And to mesh this all together, what we're trying to um, explain are the applications biology have, has within medicine. Okay, class, let's all collaborate now. So, what's the difference between meiosis and mitosis? Hmm, I think uh, what Mr. Espinoza was talking about was that one of them is for the uh, physiological growth and the other one is for the gametic. Yeah, I think the approach is right because um, one of the, the somatic ones is for uh, mitosis, is for creating cells for the body, for the skin, hair, and all those, and the other ones, the meiosis ones, are the ones for, like, sperm and eggs, for, like, babies. <laughs> what do you think, Renee? Yeah, you're right, and I think another uh, major difference, if we look at the chart, is that the number of division. If we look at uh, mitosis, we can see that it replicates only once, and in meiosis, we see a, a second replication, so we can point out that big difference. Oh, that's good. All right. Great job collaborating, class. Really like what you guys are doing. I like that you guys are able to hypothesize and use your critical thinking abilities to come up with ideas on how they are similarly different. So you guys, I heard you guys talking about the number of divisions, which is, what, which is one of the differences. So you have one in mitosis, two in meiosis. I also mentioned somebody talking about how Mitosis does only occur for physiological cells. That's very important to understand the differences between mitosis and meiosis and know that meiosis derives from uh, gametic cells. And I also heard somebody talk about the um, differences between the four haploid versus the two haploid, which produces four daughter cells for meiosis versus just two daughter cells in mitosis. That was also really, really um, good. So now what we're going to do now is we want to gather all this information that we just got and we want to come up with a hypothesis on how this all correlates to medicine. So what we're trying to do now is integrate biology with medicine. And we're going to do that right now by hypothesizing what would happen if there were to be an insertion or deletion of chromosomes within the genome. All right, class, now it's time for you to hypothesize what would happen if. So what would happen if there were 
an insertion or deletion within our genomes. So we know that each chromosome, excuse me, each cell has a set of 23 chromosomes, equivalent to 46 uh, separate daughter of cells. Chromosomes. So what we're needing now is I want you guys to collaborate with one another and find out what would happen if there were to be an insertion or deletion within a per, an individual's genome. So what would happen if, for example, each set of a human or a person genome had a perfect set of 23 sets of chromosomes, and at the 21st location within the genome, there was an extra X. All right, class, let's hypothesize and collaborate. Okay. You guys, I wonder like exactly what would happen if there's an extra chromosome at the 25th region in a person's genome, right? What would happen? Well, I guess, I don't know, but there'd be like a, some sort of like abnormal disease in there. Like that, would, that can be contributed to it. Okay, so would we expect to see it physically? <laughs> Is it really visible? Okay, so um, I'm gonna like look up something and see if I can find something that's related to this. And I think it could like lead to like some sort of disorder that can that is observable. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. At the 21st location, an additional of a chromosome will lead to a trisomy disorder known as Down syndrome. How are you doing, sis? 